Okay, I've chosen a very rainy day to update you on the Pajero uh, upgrades as they slowly happen. You need a bit of pocket money every now and again to purchase a few things. Uh, firstly, you'll see the uh, lights here. They're LED lights and uh, they're all around lights for when I go to high beam. Uh, I can clearly see what's around me a lot better than I used to be able to. Um, we're also putting a bull bar on the front and the high intensity LED lights that I'll show you, uh, really big spotlights. Um, also you will see probably reflected in the car, we've done the internal lights, uh, they're all LED, very bright, it reflected off there, but um, a really wonderful thing when you're trying to work at night, uh, especially with older eyes. <laughs> okay, on the roof you'll see a beacon just there, just underneath the uh, bull bar, it, uh, uh, sorry, the bulb underneath the uh, roof rack, and uh, it's an amber beacon that flashes uh, using LED technology, so it ba barely draws any current. Uh, it's our U one of our UHF antennas for the regular radio. There's just under here, under here, that uh, solar. That's a solar panel. It will be going on top of the beacon in the f near future. On this side, we have a. Um, 3G, 4G antenna which uh, powers up the uh, uh, Wi-Fi access point. Uh, we also have some lights on the side, LED lights, which uh, can be pointed either at buildings or even up high towards uh, work we're doing on, with cherry pickers. On the rear door we have the um, uh, where we mount the HF antenna, which is a tapped whip for the moment. Uh, but we also have um, motorized uh, points here with, with antennas that lift up with a switch so they lay flat until we are ready to uh, put them up in the country and uh, so I keep some basic uh, very soft uh, antennas on them low, pro, low uh, height antennas for the city but in the country we swap them out for some fairly long antennas which are about a meter long uh, high gain so that's uh, it for the outside of the car, although the tyre pressure monitoring system does have uh, some units on the tyres. I'll see if I can grab that as we go past and get in the car. Um, but they radio back from each tyre back to a central unit. And uh, that is... Uh, right. There's one right there. It's barely bigger than the dust cover. has very little weight and therefore it uh, basically um, doesn't cause any issues when it comes to how we, um, uh, with the balance of the tyre. Alright, in here you'll see the readout. The first thing is uh, there's a sun symbol just to the top of the uh, centre on the right. Uh, that's telling me that there's actually enough sun on this horrible rainy day to charge up the batteries and still work the system. Uh, 22.5 bars on each tyre roughly and the temperature is about 16 C on each tyre. Um, there's small variations of a few degrees but this thing's fully alarmed and uh, will tell you when you've got high temperature. I think that was my phone. Uh, high temperature or high pressure or low pressure. So if your tyre goes flat or it's about to burst you'll get a warning. Uh, which means you won't destroy your tyre. So up here, um, I have, new, oh, it's hard to see, but we have a tablet going in, um, and the tablet basically, uh, let me turn the power on, you'll see it a bit better. So the tablet uh, is able to be viewed by me as the driver, should I need to. We're actually drilling a hole in the visor so the camera will uh, work in forward-facing mode. Um, the same over here, we actually have another tablet on this one. Let me just power it up and uh, there you'll see it now. So the passenger has also got access to the internet via the wireless access point. That just pops away so it's totally invisible. Um, our map lights are all LED lights as you can see. Very bright, very useful. Um, we're about to put a accident camera on this side of the uh, 
mirror. It's got far more room behind it. Uh, and um, that way we, we also, I think we tuck away our automatic toll system um, as well behind the uh, mirror. So that means we can do forward facing video and reverse facing video. We managed to get that on eBay for $33 with a rear camera. It's full HD um, for both, un both uh, videos. They don't chop them in half or anything. Full HD wide uh, screen and uh, full GPS with time coding. Uh, so both position and time coding. Up here we have, um, let me turn on the keys. Sorry, it's the alarm. Up here we have uh, our Kenwood uh, tracking system, which is our primary tracking system, although we can go to the internet anytime if we have access and we can see exactly what's going on there. Um, let me pull up a display so that I can show you exactly what we see. And you can see a little compass on the right. Um, it's my friend's call sign. And uh, the last track I had on him was that uh, he was southwest, compass up there on the right. The GPS flashing means the GPS is actually on. Uh, 242 degrees um, from uh, this bearing, this position, and 23.7 uh, kilometers distance. So that's a UHF VHF unit. And uh, the microphone is actually here in the back seat for that so um, I can reach it but it also means that uh, people in the rear seat are able to talk easily on the uh, channel between vehicles right uh, phone with power no big deal there um, although I'm putting in a power for a different sort of phone as well uh, as the iPhone um, this is a new toy it's our um, uh, head-up display and on that head-up display, we can see. Uh, focus on. It's hard to focus on it because it's actually a reflection, so it's not actually at the spot it's meant to be on. But that says it's 8:55 in the uh, morning. I can see uh, that it's. I'm doing zero k, and it also is showing me that I'm headed west. Uh, but since that's just powered on, it's pretty meaningless until I actually move the car, and I have. Um, all good signals uh, from the satellite which is showing that it's about as good as it gets with three green bars um, and that probably means 12 satellites plus I can flip over the clock to altitude if I want if that's of any use to me uh, with just a single push button and then push button back uh, it will do miles per hour it sits on the dashboard there uh, and it's just connected via a power cable so we'll wire that in if I'm happy with it over time but I'm finding it very useful it's outside of my field of view when I'm driving so it the changing figures don't distract me but it's really easy to see if I need to have a look at it I've got my regular navigator here I've got one of my tracking transmitters just underneath uh, and there's a couple of uh, GPS engines for different things there um, I have my, I've installed the switch for the, uh, the beacon, which uh, you can probably see flashing away there outside the car. Um, and similarly, I have a bunch of switches for the lights that are on the side of the car. Very powerful, very bright. Um, over here, I have the voltmeter, which looks at my second battery in the rear and an ammeter which is turned off at the moment which is for the solar panel charging the second battery so it just remains fully fully charged um, I have some power adapters here so uh, each pair of those connectors uh, runs 2.1 amps so if I'm just charging my iPad I seriously have to make sure that I am um, only put one item on it uh, but if I'm charging up uh, some other units or powering them uh, the total has to be 2.1 amps uh, to work uh, so we're putting in some uh, a shunt and uh, voltmeter ammeter for the main battery not sure where that's going to live um, but uh, it'll be 
somewhere in full view, along with two backlit uh, temperature sensors, one for outside uh, and displays, one for uh, outside temperature, one for inside temperature. Not sure where we're mounting those. They're only $3 each, including uh, postage on eBay. Um, now for some of the, the main stuff, uh, here's another transmitter. It's uh, an ICOM 7000 that does HF bands as well as uh, uh, UHF, VHF. It's 100 watts AM or um, it's a very powerful SSB transmitter um, and uh, will get us out of trouble, talk to anywhere in the world from the car anytime I like basically. Uh, now this is our uh, CB radio and it also uh, has channels, it's, it's UHF, it has channels on UHF for my work uh, for various companies so I can just flip over to whatever I need to to work them or whether it be a repeater channel or a simplex channel, it doesn't matter. Um, this was interesting because under our seat here we have a computer which um, run wind runs Windows currently but it's uh, and it also uh, has Linux but uh, we need a display for it and there's no display on the, the in the car so the way we worked out a display was to get a radio we only had a single small space for the radio one din is the measurement in in car terms and the radio is just a normal radio and uh, that's so it's nice. It does CDs and DVDs in that slot, um, and it does SD card uh, and USB uh, connections for external music if you want to bring it with you. It's Bluetooth and can play uh, your radio and everything else, but it's got one more nifty feature um, that I like, <laughs> which is this. <laughs> it's a touch screen. This all came in for about $150, including postage, to get back to Australia. Um, and uh, basically I can change uh, modes and uh, bands and everything, but basically I can work through the, um, the different screens here. Uh, if we had analog TV, we'd be watching a TV station right now, but since changing to digital we really don't have any TV station to show you it doesn't work um, that's auxiliary and uh, we haven't uh, that's Bluetooth screen we haven't uh, added the rear camera just yet so we um, we've got it but too much work so far um, the rear camera comes up with the reversing lights there so the moment you go and reverse this thing pops out and shows you your uh, image so bottom line is it's a really nice uh, display um, for our uh, for our um, computer and how do we talk to the computer this little device here uh, it's wireless and uh, 2.4 and it gigs and uh, it connects with full keyboard and trackpad to that screen so we can run that uh, very easily and it's uh, it's tiny um, I'm thinking of getting the backlit version of this for night, but then again, we just turn on one of the map lights to uh, to use it, I guess. Um, what else? Uh, I guess that's pretty much everything. Um, we there's the really high intensity uh, spotlight for the uh, bull bar when that arrives. Um, we have to be careful. We have to get a bull bar that works with airbags. Uh, otherwise you set your airbags off with the slightest bump on the bull bar and that's not a wise thing. Um, and that's about all. But uh, certainly we've got to fit another digital UHF radio in, in here. Uh, heaven knows. Uh, and if you're thinking of stealing this car, I, I wouldn't. Uh, we have two hidden trackers on different uh, systems and uh, they run without uh, battery power. Uh, or at least run for a long time without battery power um, and uh, there's no external antennas for you to see to be able to disable it. Um, we also have an alarm and we have um, uh, the engine disabling features on the, on the vehicle as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very nice vehicle. We intend to get 
the seven inch display here, which will integrate with this system. Uh, it's the same as this navigator and it allows us to uh, post uh, an image or position of the target which may be moving, especially since we track high altitude balloons. Um, it may be moving at 200 kilometers an hour or plus, uh, but we'll be able to track that and we'll also be able to see our position and it'll be working out the best path to get to whatever the payload's current position is or the target's current position which will help us in rural Australia because unless you know, unless you can name your street or sit down and pump in all your coordinates uh, to get a pathway, your regular navigator just won't cut it and uh, having maps um, is a very hard thing to ask uh, for rural areas. Uh, you can look at them and not necessarily see the best way to get across a, a, uh, an area that is devoid of most uh, road so, you know, um, access. So that's about all. Um, we've got a lot further to go. Uh, we certainly um, aren't stopping there, uh, but there's a, the car is probably worth about three and a half thousand dollars to four thousand. Um, but it's running perfectly uh, and uh, absolutely a joy to drive. Uh, but in, internally, it is got some really high-tech features that you just won't find elsewhere. There's a few more things I can't really tell you about um, because they involve security, but um, otherwise uh, this car can pretty much track you. If I put a little module under your magnetically attached to your car you got no chance of getting away from me um, that's illegal and I wouldn't do it of course but uh, there's certainly uh, going to be a lot of um, commercial uh, aspects to this that I'm looking forward to